SCTV is on the air. SCTV now begins its programming day. Starring John Candy, Joe Flatterty, Eugene Levy, Andrea Martin, Catherine O'Hara, and Dave Thomas. Television like you've never seen before. The following is a statement of policy of the SCTV network. Now here is network president, Guy Caballero. Come in, Guy. Hello, I'm Guy Caballero, president of the SCTV network. I just said that. <laughs> well, I'm saying it again, now shut up. We here at SCTV recognize the emergence of the oil-rich third world countries and would like to welcome these wealthy Arabs to the community of world nations. And while many people fear the sudden influx of Arab investments in North America, we at SCTV would welcome the financial participation of anyone, regardless of race, color, creed, or national origin. And that even applies to those oil-rich Arab sheiks whom many decry as nouveau riche. Well, we at SCTV admire these free-spending Arabs and extend our warmest desire for their very sound Arabian dollars. <laughs> and so, I'm saying to all you Arabs out there, invest heavily in the SCTV network. <laughs> you won't regret it, Effendis. So long. This is Guy Caballero for the SCTV network. That was Guy Caballero for the SCTV Network. I just said that. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't hear you. I wasn't paying any attention. You... Guy Caballero, SCTV Network President, Thursdays at 9. Good morning, it's 6 a.m. and time for the Farm Film Report with Big Jim McBob. Good morning, farmers, and I call you farmers because who the hell else will be up at this hour? <laughs> well, this is Big Jim McBob, and before we do anything else, why don't we take a look at the closing box office receipts of films currently in release in our area as reported in the Farmer's Film Almanac. Well, let's see now. The big car chase is still running strong, $25,000 this week, and in its second run, Coma is finally showing signs of life, $39,000. Pretty Baby turned in a neat trick, $48,000 at 105 local theaters and drive-ins. Turning now to beef, uh, John Travolta is up a half, Sylvester Stallone is down sharply, Burt Reynolds is holding firm, and Marlon Brando's putting on weight. Well, let's turn now to our critics' corner, and today's guest, Billy Saul Hurok. Billy Saul, welcome. Thanks, Big Jim. Now, I understand you see that new uh, Russian film at the Fine Arts Drive-In. Yeah, I see that new Russian film called The Red Hat. I got a red hat. Yeah, I seen it the minute I come in. But it weren't like the hat you're wearing. <laughs> well, you want to tell us about it? Okay. Well, it was this big furry hat about this here size. Tell us about the movie. Tell us about the movie. Oh, yeah. Well, these here Russian farmers, they was peasants. Well, what? I'm a farmer, but I ain't no peasant. <laughs> well, in the movie, these guys was peasants. Well, they got mad at this year King guy. And they blowed him up at the end. <laughs> blowed him up? Yeah. Sounds like they stole that from uh, one of our movies, The Fury by John Cassavetes. Oh, yeah, I like that movie. He got blowed up at the end. <laughs> that reminds me of The Exorcist. That's funny. I don't remember that little girl getting blowed up at the end. Hmm. Oh, that's right. She throwed up at the end. I remember now. <laughs> Well, you know, you can't trust those Russians. They'll probably come out with a movie now about a little peasant girl that throwed up. Or gets blowed up. Anyway, I really did like this here new Russian movie called The Red Hat. I'm going to probably see it a couple more times, too. Well, Billy Saul, you certainly like to see people get blowed up in movies, don't you? I sure do. I love to see people get blowed up. You remember James Cagney and White Heat? He got blowed up good. Blowed up, that's right. <laughs> yeah. And that pointy face guy in Star Wars? Yeah, yeah. Blowed up. Blowed up real good. How about Thunderball? <laughs> they all got blowed, blowed up, up there, yeah. Blowed up. Yeah, blowed up bad. Blowed well, up. 
That's all the time we have for Farm Film Report, so this is Big Jim McBob saying bye-bye. Mom! Is soup ready yet? In a minute. Right now, it's just a bag of chemicals. But in just one minute, it's going to be eight ounces of delicious chicken noodle soup. In a reusable styrofoam plastic cup. It's cup and soup from Dowd Chemical. The real cup you cook up with the soup. my life a little easier. Think fast, Bobby! <laughs> <laughs> this is SCTV Channel 109 in Mellonville, Plattsburgh, and Grimsby, Cable 9. My name is Michael Anthony, and for the past 20 years I've been employed as a male secretary for a philanthropist whose unusual hobby is giving away the sum of one million dollars weekly to a different deserving person. His name is John Barrett's for Tipton, and he's the millionaire. Well, Mike, let's see who's going to be our next millionaire. Mr. Tipton, may I remind you, you haven't given away a million dollars in quite a while. Oh, yes, you're right, Mike. I keep forgetting I don't have the money that I once did. But I did give away a few thousand dollars last month, didn't I? Sir, you only gave away one thousand dollar check last month, and I have it here. It bounced. Wow. Well, there's still some money left in the account. This Adam Lee couple, they look interesting. I wonder how they'll be able to cope with a cashier's check for $50. <laughs> now, maybe I'd better make that a personal check. May I remind you, sir, uh, three weeks back pay? Oh, we'll talk about that later, Mike, if you don't mind. Here, give this to the Adam Lees, and let's just see how they respond. We'll see, sir. Oh, and Mike. Yes, sir. The usual conditions. The usual conditions. The usual conditions. I've had it up to here, Buster. You pull a stunt like that again, bird brain, and I'll throttle you. Oh, I should have been tomorrow. Yeah, I couldn't even throttle a canary and all that. Okay, start chirping, because yeah. I'm going to bring your neck. Yeah, what do you want? Are you Mitch and Madge Adamley? Yeah. yeah. What of it? My name is Michael Anthony, and I have for you a personal check for $50. Yeah, Yikes. big deal. You may have it only on certain conditions. Oh. What? First it's of only all, 50 bucks? What are you talking about? First of all, you must never reveal the source of the gift. We don't care. Yeah. Secondly, you must never inquire as to the identity of the donor. It says right here it's a personal check of John Barris for Tipton. Yeah, right there. <laughs> that idiot. What? All right, all right, come on. You come must on, spend all of the money, of yeah, course. Yeah, I don't think it'll be it, too it, hard. Get out! 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 That's really nice. All right, that's it. Well, Mike, how did our young couple react to their gift? They got into another argument, sir. Then they kicked me out. Fifty bucks. Look, Mr. Tipton, let's lay our cards on the table. Fifty bucks is chicken feed nowadays. You can't change anyone's lifestyle on that kind of money. I know that, Mike, but I'm broke. I'm flat busted, wiped out. You know, Mike, I've given away hundreds of millions of dollars over the years to complete strangers, but do you think one of them would have the decency to, to give me some money back? A little bit of change? You want to remain anonymous, you old goat? Now look, there's a little matter of three weeks back pay you owe me. I'll pay you next week, Mike. Next I... week, nothing, you old buzzard. I'm out there taking the heat while you're sitting behind this desk letting no one see your face. Now, if you don't pay me, I'm going to expose your face to the world. Oh, no, Mike, no one's ever seen my face. Carry that 
No, no. Mike. Give me the wallet. No. How much are you got? My... There's not enough here for cab fare. Well, Mike, what are you going to do? All right, do? I'm going to expose Mike. your face. Come on. There, that's what he looks like. No, not my that's what he looks like. Get your hands down. There, the old oh, goat. Take a look at him, that cheapskate. Oh, Mike, Mike, Mike. I want you to... Mike, go into town. I want you to go into town. Hang out at the saloon. Find out what Butch Cavendish and his gang are up to. Butch Cavendish? Yeah. Who the hell do you think I am, Tonto? Oh, no. You see my old goat? No. Now look, sell that chair. Give me some money. You owe me three weeks. Oh, I'll get that. Mate. No, you I don't sit in and I'll deal with you later. <laughs> yes? Are you John Bertrand Tipton? No, he is. John Beresford Tipton? Yes? I have for you a cashier's check for one million dollars. Cashier's check? For one million dollars? <laughs> Excuse me, sir. You mean you give away millions of dollars by yourself? I have no one to do it for me. I am a male secretary uh, with 20 years' experience. Hey, I'm looking for a male secretary. Really? Yes. You have your own attaché case? Oh, definitely. Well, perhaps we can talk about it over an Irish coffee. Lovely. <laughs> Lovely. After you, sir. Business. Thank you very much. A million dollars! Mike, a million dollars! I got a million! Stay tuned next week for The Millionaire of Mecca on SCTV. <laughs> and oysters. I'm Bob Bond, and today we take a look at another myth that has sprung from the long-standing hatred between oysters and falcons. And to do that, we're going to need two members of our studio audience. I'll take you and you. Okay, the myth? Falcons steal pearls from oysters. The reality? Well, let's see. Okay, you're the oyster, you've got the pearl, you're the falcon. Get it! Go! <laughs> Well, there you have it. Next week, the myth, oysters climb cliffs and steal baby falcons from their nests. The reality, join me then and find out. talk. And speaking of talk, let's talk to a man who really knows how to speak. One of the busiest announcers in television today, Harvey Keitel. Thanks, Lou. I always watch your show. I'm a big fan. Harvey, your voice dominates commercial television advertising, selling record collections, dices and slicers, virtually every conceivable gadget for the home. You must make a lot of money. Well, last year, Lou, I worked exclusively for Keitel, Jmar, J. Lee, Ronco, Popeil, Peelmar, and Dixie Southern stores, and I only made $14.99. $1,499? No, $14.99. <laughs> We're ready for you, Mr. Keitel. Excuse me for a moment. Well, this is it, ladies and gentlemen, a chance to see the man behind the voice we all know, Harvey Keitel, actually doing a television commercial. Two record set, $6.99. Taper cassette, $8.99. <laughs> There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. A professional like Harvey Keitel needs only one take to do the job right. Nice work, Harvey. Thanks, Lou. Harvey, I want to get to know the man behind the voice. What do you do for relaxation? Well, I like to hunt, fish, swim, play tennis, soccer, football, baseball, and basketball. I've read somewhere that you actually played professional baseball. Who did you play for? How long did you play? And what was your batting average? Cincinnati, two years, $2.99. We're ready for you again, Mr. Keitel. You'll have to excuse me again, Lou. Ladies and gentlemen, let's take another look at Harvey Keitel behind the scenes. Truly the greatest announcer in television today. Miracle Cutting Blade, $2.99. Pocket Fisherman, just $6.99. Thanks, Harvey. How does he do it? One right after another. He must have the biggest larynx in the world. Thanks, Lou. Harvey, you must have had voice lessons to do what you do. Where did you study? Well, I studied the National Institute of Broadcasting, the Columbia School of Broadcasting, the American Broadcasting Institute, and the National Academy of Voices. What a coincidence, so did I. No kidding. Yeah, when did you graduate? 68, 71, 73, and 75. 67, 69, 71, 73. Ah, we, we sing with our voices high, our natural.
to the fancy eye. And I be Joyce of Victory, sing on high song of liberty. <laughs> We're ready, Mr. Cato. Say, Lou, why don't you try this one? Okay. I'll stay here and hold your mic while you do. Boy, what an amazing coincidence. Do you believe that guy? We went to the same school. I think I'm really going to get to like him. Now playing at the Odeon Fairlawn, Coma Mall Twin Cinemas, Dewey Drive-Ins, Holiday Indoor Sextet Cinemas, and the Rialto in Bolton. Absolutely fantastic. What a take. He's an actual. I can't believe that guy. Fantastic, Lou. Well, you must have some larynx on you. Oh, what a coincidence. I said the same thing about you. <laughs> Let's compare. Oh, yours is bigger. Oh, yours is bigger. Did you ever have notes? Yes, I did. Then I had to have an operation. Cost me a lot of money. I paid $999. Well, I've learned from experience, Harvey, that when it comes to your voice, money is no object. Harvey, thanks for being on the show. We'll see you next week on Speaking of Talk. Until then, I'm Lou Jaffe. Good night. Oh, look, it's Mr. LaRue. Hi, Mr. LaRue. Hi, Mr. LaRue. Hi, Mr. LaRue. How's the world treating you, girls? Oh, Mr. LaRue, can you help? I just can't get these tough, greasy stains out of these pants. Have you tried burning them? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, Mr. LaRue, isn't there something better than our leading detergent? Sure, girls. Johnny's got something that'll clean those old stains up just like new. Fat chance. What did you say? Mr. LaRue, can you help? All right. But this time, I don't help for nothing, oh. if you know what I mean. <laughs> sure, Mr. LaRue. <laughs> okay, girls, come on over here. Come on, come on, come on, hurry up, hurry up. Now, the only way to remove tough grease is with grease. Grease? Sure, like you fight fire with fire. Oh, you mean like when I use gum to get gum off my fine furniture? Yeah, and the only way to cure a hangover is with more booze. Now, dump in those greasy clothes. All right, that's a nasty stain. Give me that. All right, dump them in there. Come on, get them in there. Move it. Okay, sorry. And you pour in the grease just like that. There we go. Pour in the grease. Good. Close her up. And then we mumbo. Come on, let's mumbo. Sometimes it works and sometimes it uh, doesn't. <laughs> All right, pay up. Come on, I know what you housewives really want. Come on, I did my part, now you do yours. Come on. Come on, baby. Oh, no, no, Place, the Middle East. The time, probably before you were even born. The event, the titanic struggle between three giants of British history as we discover how the Middle East was won. Starring Peter O'Toole as Lawrence of Arabia. My skin is fair, but in my service, I am more Arab than English. Richard Burton as Sir Richard Burton. Sometimes I feel more like an Arab than the Arab. Well, and Richard Harris as Gordon of Khartoum. My coat is red. My trousers blue. Also starring Sean Connery as the Mufti. I'm the bloody Mufti. Away with you. And also starring Candace Bergen as the kidnapped American lady who loved the Mufti. I love you, Mufti. Yes, Candace Bergen gives the performance of her life. I will follow you to the ends of the earth. But please, take me back to New York first. But she's snowed under by the powerful performances of these three powerful British actors. 
Mufti, you must listen. No, Mufti, you don't want to listen to me. I am the answer to save your people's lips to that puppet. And I will be responsible for the consequences. Mufti! So long as Arab fights Arab, tribe against tribe, so shall you remain a little people, a silly people, greedy, barbarous, and cruel. <laughs> you shall remain a foolish people with foolish ways, a stupid and retarded people, a people with big noses and bad sanitary habits. You shall remain a ridiculous people, a people... All right, right enough. You're talking to the bloody Mufti of all the Arabs. Mufti. 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 I see one united Arab empire. Free of British influence, with you, Mufti, as the chieftain. Mufti! Listen to me! You shall not wear bed sheets as clothing any longer! You shall wear trousers. Fine British trousers. Made of tweeds. Wool. And hats. Big hats. Smart big beaver hats! And then, Mufti, when you look like Britons, then you can attend British schools. And maybe even the Church of England. And then, and only then, will all the Arab nations be proud and free colonies of the British Empire! Mufti, your country must become a British protectorate. Because then, then only then, you'll not have to fear the sting of the German Hun. Or the tentacles of the great Russian bear. Whoa! <laughs> or be devoured by the French fleur de lis. Or be sandwiched by the Polish sausage. Or be crushed like chili and peppers. All right! Oh, shut up, the lawyer! Chili and peppers? What kind of metal? Are, are, are you mad? Have you lost your mind? mind? Gentlemen! Gentlemen! Yeah, okay, gentlemen. What you! <laughs> the answer is simple. The man who takes Damascus holds the fate of Arabia in his hand. Yes, history was never like this, as three colossal figures of the British stage portray three titanic figures of British history fighting for the spoils of Damascus. We must raise the Arabian flag. No, we'll raise the British flag. We'll raise the British flag over the Arabian flag. Come on, yes. Oh, you see three great British actors actually blown up in front of your eyes. Richard Burton. Peter O'Toole, Richard Harris in How the Middle East Was Won. Now playing at a theater or drive-in near you. Boy, I sure am gonna see that film. Yeah, they all got blowed up good. <laughs>